<laughs> I'm early. I'm early, motherfuckers. You weren't expecting that, were ya? Yeah, I'm early today, motherfuckers. That's right. You have to see my face more than you thought you were gonna. <sighs> I'm just waiting for today. I'm gonna be talking to Chud Logic. It's gonna be good as shit. We're gonna talk about Twitter. And then I'm gonna do some memes. Hello, Under the Thunder. I hope you're doing all right today. Um, Ur Urban Meyer, I see that you're back. Good to see you back. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, I'm sorry about that. You get having some internet issues. Yeah, I think I feel like the internet has been like generally unstable across the board, which is unfortunate. It's probably just going to be just a second here. I got to wait and see when he's ready to call and then I got to figure out. How I'm going to set it up. Probably just going to have it on this cut, this little angle that I have. Um, unless he has some content he wants to go over. I'm really sorry to hear that under the thunder. We're all a little bit lonely right now. Just do your best. Try to make friends to the best of your ability. There's not a whole lot that we can do in this very moment. Because of the limitations of, pan of the pandemic and whatnot. So just do your best, alright? Just got to hold strong. Still got a long way to go. So, does it feel like my camera is being like a little juddery? Maybe not. Hey, Tree Dad ninety seven, good to see you. Good to see you. We're just getting set up here. I'm waiting for a call uh, from Chud Logic because I'm going to be on Chud Logic's show today, and we're going to be talking about Twitter. As you know, I am. Um, oh, I don't know. I'm a little famous, you know, as they say for for losing it about Twitter. I have problems with Twitter, despite the amount of time I spend on Twitter. But such is life. Such is life. All right, let's see. I also have a meme here. I'm going to post. I'm going to be posting this meme occasionally in chat throughout the day because I want more likes on it. This is the meme right here. We only have seven so far, and I need, it's a meme that requires likes. So if you all go to that, you don't have to retweet it or anything unless you really want to. But if you could like it, if you want to hear my opinions, the higher the number, the more opinions I'm going to rapid fire through at the end of this session today. So yeah, welcome to the community. Exactly. Thanks for coming by. I don't know if we've seen you here before. I don't know if you've come in and, or if this is your first time, but thanks for coming by. We're going to talk about a whole bunch of super, super interesting stuff. Hey, Flowery Jane. Good to see ya. Good to see ya. And then we have um, a very profound statement from Glooby, which is uh, poop. Impressive. Impressive. Very epic. I wonder if my mic is a little bit off center. Back. Front. Oh, yeah, it is a little bit, isn't it? Hmm. Hold on one second. I'm going to mute this and adjust. Way better. Hey, that's actually slightly better. This thing actually has really, really good condenser features. Yes. And in fact, I am guessing I'm probably going to talk about that a little bit. It is indeed a very, very big oof. Oof. Um, incredibly disappointing. Incredibly frustrating. Um, but also, <sighs> there's some um, there's some other things going on there that I find uh, pretty unsettling. All right, I'm going to be in the green room now. We'll see if, uh, yep, I'm ready. So I should be pulled in in just a second, and then we'll begin our conversation. Hello? Hello. Can you hear me? Oh, I can hear you absolutely perfectly. Amazing. Going? You good? Yeah, I'm perfect. Uh, how are you doing? Oh. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. Um, I was just talking a little bit about um, Joshua for Congress. Yeah, I was listening in. Uh, I've heard a lot about Joshua for Congress this morning. God. And it kind of fits perfectly with our topic that we were going to talk about today, doesn't it? Oh, it, yes, exactly. It really does. It's like we've got a new fresh drama that's been served up to us to link into what we're talking about. Yeah, it really is perfect. 
Um, so do you have what, stuff, a uh, real quick question. Do you have stuff that you're going to have on your screen that you want me to comment on or because if you can, no, if no, that's... Gonna... okay, so you just want to talk then. All right, let's do it. Um, yeah, I'm just going to sort of scroll and maybe play some wormies. You know how it is. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh... Cause I didn't know if you had any particular <laughs> tweets that you wanted to talk about in this, in the context um... of the greater discussion of Twitter. No, it's all good. We'll, we'll just we'll uh, what's it called? Um, we'll just we'll just vague tweet. We'll vague post about it. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> yeah, perfect. That um, sounds literally I- ideal in this case. Before before we get into it, can I just ask you something? Um, yeah, yeah. What what are your thoughts on this Joshua River Congress thing? Oh, I'm so happy you asked. Um, because actually, I th- I don't know if I'm actually in his district, but I certainly have seen a lot of Joshua for Congress stuff around here because I live in the state that he was running in. Um, I actually talked to a bunch of his campaign staff when I went to a couple of Bernie events earlier in the year. And I got to say, this whole turn of events, boy, is it disappointing. Um, Yeah, Yeah, yeah. pretty disappointing. I always thought that Joshua for Congress was kind of cool. Like, like, like I never really, I don't know. I don't want to say I never took his campaign seriously, but I mean, running a, running a, like as a socialist is always a long shot. If you can do it anywhere, it's here in Washington. I mean, we have in the city of Seattle, um, we have a liter- like an like an openly socialist um, city councilwoman, Kashama Swant. She's amazing. You can see her name on the flat on my if, if, for people who are watching my stream. You can actually see her name on the sign behind me. Um, she's pretty great. Uh, Joshua Collins to me always seemed like the type of candidate who is there to like shift the Overton window and get people talking about mm-hmm. stuff. But mm-hmm. as it turns out, it, I guess he's not even that. And instead, it's an yeah. embarrassment. Yeah, sure. Well, the, the kind of p- final point I kind of came to was like, let's. I'm going to hear him out later. Yeah, he's, he's streaming in uh, about three hours. Um, so you know. Yeah, I feel like the damage speak, is you know? is kind of already done, right? Like, yeah, uh, yeah. a lot of the damage was not necessarily like, um, like I don't really see how he's like. I I genuinely don't see how he can explain away, um, like switching his party affiliation at the last minute. That is. That is pretty bad. Like, yeah. um, I know that there's a lot of people. I've, and I've, you know, Twitter. We're going to talk about Twitter. But, like, I've been on Twitter a lot and been watching people's responses to it. And there have been some people defending him for this choice. But I, I genuinely think it's pretty indefensible um, to just sort of, like, without discussing with your 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 donors or anything like that, just make the change to a, to a brand new third party at the last minute. That's basically dumpstering your campaign. Um, whatever chances he had are totally gone, completely gone. So, yeah. Yeah, sure. Um, I'm, I'm interested to hear him out, but I mean, certain things are just yeah. like, there is no, like, I don't know, like there are certain actions where it's just like, okay, there's no, there's no nuance to be had here. You just did a thing that was wrong. Like, yeah. So I'm, yeah, I'm pretty, definitely. uh, pretty disappointed with his, his, um, the way that he's decided to approach this particular fallout. Um, but I mean, it does kind of play into the Twitter stuff, doesn't it? Because like, I mean, a lot of this, yeah. a lot of the blow up was, I mean, and arguably his entire campaign unfolded on Twitter. Um, I mean, that's a little bit uncharitable because he does have people, he did have people canvassing out at like events that I went to and stuff. But I just don't, there's no way to know the scope unless you're able to see inside. And he did have a lot of money. So, yeah. Absolutely. So, so let's... um. Let, let's get into this then. So yeah, obviously yeah. we've um, we've 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 got together to talk about Twitter drama and toxicity. I suppose a good place to start is like because I I was kind of inspired because I saw a YouTube clip that you'd done um, Thank talking you. about this exact thing. Yeah, which I really I got really, I really mad. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sure. So so do you want to just give like for for anyone that maybe hasn't seen like a, an overview of what your position is with with Twitter as a broad statement? Yeah, yeah. Um, so what I think about Twitter is I. First of all, I, I always refer that Twitter is a mind virus, um, but I, I think maybe I need to retire that exact language. Um, although I do think it behaves like it sometimes. Um, I I feel like Twitter is one of the most like uh, whether intentionally or not, like sinister websites on the internet. The way that mm. it engages with um, like the way that we socialize is so unhealthy. And the reasons for this is like the, the the core reason for this. A lot of people will point to the character count and be like, oh, the character count, it like limits what you can say. It strips nuance because you can only say so much. But it really isn't just the character count. And I always stress that because the platform itself is designed entirely around ads. And 
the way that they have figured out how to prioritize ads is by like really hardcore focusing on um, engagement, which is like, you know, people opening up the tweet on their phone, people opening it up. It'll record when people open the tweet and look at it. It'll record if it goes on somebody's timeline and they scroll past it. Like they have all of these crazy metrics and, and incomprehensible algorithms that determine engagement. And they, Twitter puts that above anything else. Like, there is no, like, when they say they filter for quality content, the only metrics that they really use, minus, like, filtering for swear words and stuff, is engagement. Mm. So if people are engaging with mm -hmm. something, that means it's, quote-unquote, good. Yeah, sure. But they will put that to the detriment of sense. So threading, which has always been really bad on Twitter, I think most people who've been on Twitter for a long time know that threads on Twitter are, like, the messiest things to go through. <laughs> And yeah, of yeah. course, we have the famous, um, you know, people who you do the one out of like 200 tweets where it's just like, oh, my God, <laughs> like this person's writing a novel like via post-it notes. So you, <laughs> you get yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you get the I think the most I think the longest I've ever actually seen was that one by um, that Gwen Snyder person who did like a 236 tweet thread. And I'm just like, um, I, I don't I don't know how to respond to that. But the important part about the way threading is so fucked on Twitter, and it, it's it's so incredibly fucked, it, is that out of a conversation, even if like the original tweet is doing really good, the rest of the tweets will be ordered and served up to people's timelines based on engagement. So like, mm. say you're writing like this fucking massive essay on, on Twitter and it's the most insightful thing that any human has ever seen, the most insightful shit. But in one of your tweets, you like accidentally typed but with two T's instead of but with one T. That tweet will probably get served to everyone on the planet because they're going to be people who that sticks out to and they interact with that and hit like and then they have a reason to retweet it or they're goofing on it or whatever. So it's completely impossible to actually like transmit ideas of a certain size or complexity on Twitter because mm. of the way the platform works. That's my basic platform on Twitter um, or my basic analysis of Twitter. And where I'm going from there is that, like, the left sucks at Twitter. Sucks yeah, yeah, ass at Twitter. Like, we're so bad at Twitter. Like, the worst. And, and like, we're good at fucking YouTube, obviously. We got, like, channels exploding all over YouTube. We're good at fucking Twitch. Twitch is, like, has its own entire, like, cadre of, like, lefties of all stripes that are, that are all doing pretty decently, you know, as decently as you can do on, on Twitch. Everybody's doing great on Twitch. Um... Fucking Twitter, though, what a mess. If you take a look yeah. into into left Twitter on any day, it's just like, it's like you're you're like uh you're like opening up the fucking spaghetti dimension, and you look in, and it's just like <laughs> blah, blah, blah. this is fucking like you know you know what I'm talking about from you know that episode of SpongeBob where like like yeah. Squidward gets fucking banished to the spaghetti dimension. Yeah, that's this Twitter is the spaghetti dimension. It's just like a mess. You can't like the smartest people you think are just like howling and screaming and holding like shits in both of their hands and throwing them against the wall, and it's just like. I, I don't even know. There's a clip. I think there's a clip from fucking Community where, like, he opens the door and goes in and everything's on fire and he's, like, delivering the pizzas. I don't know if anybody's seen that. I'm probably yeah, making yeah, a yeah. stupid reference. But it's, like, holy shit. You open the door into Twitter in the morning and it's just, like, it's as if everyone you know just screamed all at once the moment you wake up in the morning and look on Twitter. And so my approach is, like, okay, like, obviously, like, just withdrawing from Twitter altogether probably isn't the right answer. Because it's like, you could, and, and certainly it's a valid answer for people who are like, oh, this shit just stresses me the fuck out. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But as like, like from multiple angles, if you're a lefty who's like doing content that has lefty, you know, politics on the internet, whether or not you're like, whether or not that's your like advocacy is your focus or you just want to meme or whatever, we can all pretty much admit that like we need to do better on Twitter. So my approach is like, how the fuck, like, what are the problems with Twitter? What are some examples of those? And like, how the fuck do we do better with it? And I've come up with a couple of um, ideas that I think are good. Um, and some like basic principles that I think are a good idea. But I don't think I have like solved the Twitter enigma yet. And I don't know if it's even possible. But no, sure. Yeah. I, I think, you know, the biggest, the biggest problem I think I've noticed with it. And, you know, is everyone, it's, it's a hot take economy, right? Oh, so absolutely. You know, you know that you're going to um, obtain some social capital. You're going to gain some followers. You're going to get some likes if you have the hottest, quickest take on something. So it pushes people to, you know, 
do these these spicy takes on the hottest button issues. And the best example would I can think of would be like the ContraPoints video, right? Oh yeah. It's mm-hmm. It's almost like I can just imagine these people waiting in the win- wings, rubbing their hands together, waiting for the latest video. And it's a like, bang. And then scouring through it, looking, oh, what can we find? Oh, look, there's this clip here. There's that clip there. Do a tweet thread. 900 fucking likes later. Oh, yeah. Fucking transfer it. Blah, blah, blah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. No. And, and it's to the point where, like, uh, every single time I hear that a new ContraPoints video has dropped, I'm just like, my mood drops immediately. Nothing to do yeah. with ContraPoints. Just because I know that for the next three fucking days, and this is happened by the way for like at least a solid at least a solid year of of each video that comes out is a shitstorm for like two to three days and it's weird how like you can almost get the math for it because it's so it's yeah, yeah. so like formulaic how it unfolds and it's just like the first thing that people do is like oh yeah i, I think what it is is like there's a constant pressure to say about i mean and i do this i have a tweet that i like wrote last night where i was just like 100 percent percent no like no joke like clout sharking essentially where it's like last night i know fucking jeff bezos and trillionaire are twin are are trending i'm gonna write a tweet that has both of those words in it just because i want people to see my opinion about jeff bezos because instead of fucking every other dumb asshole on the internet's opinion about jeff bezos being a trillionaire so there is always that pressure for everyone and there's varying degrees of it no one is actually immune to this because and that's the thing that I try to harp on is like no person who goes onto Twitter is immune to these because it's coming from fucking all sides. Um, mm-hmm. This this like sort of um, incentive to constantly like not just post but to post um, very aggressively or not even necessarily mm-hmm. aggressively but very um, like like spicy like you want it you want Provo- something provocatively yeah provoc yeah that's the right word thank you um, yeah it's like super provocative right it's like you want you don't just yeah, yeah. want to like. T- tell your opinion you want to tell your opinion in the way that gets people fucking laughing and they want you want them to retweet it you want it to be so snappy and good but there's yeah, a lot really of pithy. yeah p- yeah exactly or or like or like sarcastic or whatever and we all know like we all know the pe- like good people at twitter like people who are fucking good at twitter um like you can even go so far you can even take that as far as like fucking donald trump's like media team is like they mm. know how to do the Twitter because he'll just scream something in all caps that's like like Obama Gate at like like <laughs> and and that tweet will explode because it's just like a hundred thousand people all projecting whatever their feelings are onto that. And yeah, so definitely. it's like yeah, so I'm like I don't know, I see certain things and I'm just like, Oh my god, like we have to change the way that we look at this at this site. Um yeah. Yeah, definitely. And and you know, there's there's some real like kind of kind of toxic behavior that people engage in and it's kind of quite unique to twitter in terms of how it like operates so for example you know like the quote tweet tunnel oh yeah yeah. yes which (laughs) is like hilarious because like i i've noticed that that's like a new that's like a it's not a new thing but it's like coming back like that used to be a meme on like old twitter of like when quote tweets first came out of like just nesting whatever the original thing was and just distorting it all the way up until you see how far from the original you could telephone it but that actually unironically happens. Like I've watched like people do the meme ones where it's like, what was the one that was like, I was reading Marx when you were like reading children's yeah. books or whatever. It's like, it's like copy pasta, right? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Some people There's it. those. Like pasta. But then I've seen whole conversations <laughs> between people that I respect and people that I yeah. like who are really fucking yeah. smart, who I know are like the biggest brain motherfuckers I've ever met. And yet they're like, you're a doo-doo ass. And like, that's like, (laughs) that's like the level. That is is the level. Yeah, that is the level. It's literally just dumb insults being slung at each other. And it it feels like a But mixed in, mixed in with like Marxist analysis. So it's like if you were trying to eat your fucking cereal bowl in the morning and someone just walked up and took a huge shit in it, but then you just kept going. Like why would you throw it out, right? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And uh, and the thing is as well, it's like it just fills up your timeline. Like there's been times where like there's this quote tweet battle going on between these two people and you literally are scrolling through and for the whole day you see it going on. No, you want to know how to ruin you want to know how to ruin your life. The best the the, the way to ruin your life immediately on Twitter is to follow two people with two people in the same space with slightly different opinions. 
I'm not kidding you because they will disagree and the way that Twitter's algorithm works is you'll get served every comment that they're giving to each other because they're both mutuals with you so they're like heavy yeah. and all you can see is just like it's like it's like if you were trying to every time you tried to go on the internet to play a game you had to have like piped into your headphones an argument between two friends that's what Twitter is like <laughs> as we use that's it currently so true yeah definitely um in fact someone put it I think it was uh, trashcam1312 said um, what's hilarious to me about Twitter drama, I never get involved in it because it's basically the equivalent of two people chucking post-it notes at each other across a wall. Yes! And I was like, that was such so, a good way of putting it. Oh my it. God, it's so true. And yet, but and like, and the thing is, it's funny because like, it doesn't, again, it doesn't matter how big brain you are. It doesn't matter how smart you are, like when you go into Twitter, if because it, the problem is with, misunderstanding how Twitter works, not how smart you are elsewhere. Twitter is yeah, like yeah. super manipulative. You know how like- Yes, it is. Yeah, it's like super manipulative. So like, but also there's this other thing where there's like a fuck ton of unintentional like ir irritants on Twitter. So like, of course you have the character limit is the most obvious one, but there is, there is the desync, like the fact that like the servers take a little bit of time to update. So sometimes you get a comment um, just as somebody has finished writing the next one. So you'll get like three of their comments in a row. And if you're trying to parse through those, it's like, oh my God, it starts to get really annoying, right? Cause you're getting overwhelmed with information. But then there's also like severe times where if Twitter's having like a heavy load, like it goes completely bonkers and you have no idea like which part of the, of the response people are making to you that you're engaging with. And both of you are getting increasingly irritated without acknowledging it. It's like, uh, you know, like, Imagine if like you had a um, the way that I would imagine like this part of Twitter is like if you had two friends sitting at dinner and unbeknownst to them, there was like electrodes in the seat. Right. And so they're talking about something and then you're shocking them in like like without them noticing they're like, ah, what the fuck? And over the course of the conversation, they're each getting increasingly angry at each other. And then you come in and you're like, hey, what do you guys think about this contentious political issue? And they're both so fucking irritated because they've been getting cattle prodded in the ass unbeknownst to them for like two hours and then they just blow up on each other and suddenly you have two dead friends and it's like yeah definitely yeah that's how that's how like twitter seems to unfold it's like the the passive irritants of the platform completely debilitate people's ability to engage um in like discourse um yeah well another thing as well is like because because you just have like the day-to-day -day disagreements of people like you know you might have like an anarchist and an ml going at each other a little bit which is just oh, kind yeah. of background day -to -day, you know. of... yeah but then you'll get like a drama and then it's just fucking war like two days right? yeah yeah i mean and that was like i mean you had what this last weekend what dramas did we have uh we had the contra drama which is 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 debilitates the internet debilitates twitter if you follow anybody on the left on twitter uh, specifically in trans yeah. circles you're just your twitter's done for the weekend that's all you're gonna see for the rest of the weekend minus some fucking like n like promoted tweet from miss monopoly or some shit yeah you had the black nationalism drama which was incredibly infuriating and and like that thing drove me nuts because the entire thing was was sparked out of a totally reasonable conversation that had some spice yeah sure but nothing outside of the purview of like normal argument on twitch lots of big ideas really complicated history you know lots of nuance but then you could you can take you know you can't post 40 minutes of a conversation to twitter and get any likes you need to yeah. shrink it down you need to have something like you know, like something that you could be, oh yeah, haha, ha, funny. Like a pig rolling down a hill or like a duck getting blown yeah, yeah. away in a storm or some random shit like that, you know? Um, it's like, so so there's this, again, there's that incentive to like, hey, let me post the spiciest section of this incredibly complicated discussion about really heavy issues that a lot of people have heavy emotions about. And so people will take that onto Twitter. And some of some people who do this are not like bad actors. They're just... They're just mad and they're like, look at this. I can't believe somebody would say this shit. And then they post it. And then every single person, there's like, I mean, you have no control on Twitter. That is another aspect of Twitter. You have no control of where your messaging goes. So you're like, wow, this sounds really bad or whatever. Um, then gets retweeted to somebody else's entire follower list. And who knows what they're going to come up with. And if, and the thing is, is like, again, there's that instinct to just say, wow, this 30 seconds of this random dude, I don't know, or whatever, boom, fucking 
it immediately becomes the most disastrous thing you've ever seen. Everybody's a racist. Everybody's a bigot. Everybody's at each other's throats. And no, and, and, and it's like, it's unforgivable sins. You're bad for the left. This, that, and the other thing. And it's all off of, like, the black nationalism drama was off of 30 seconds out of an incredibly long and nuanced conversation, which I don't even think, I mean, now judging by the res resolution that's happened a few days later after everybody's screaming at each other and stressed and shit, they're, they were able to amicably you know, conclude their differences, but you would never ever be able to recognize that they like, or know that they concluded their differences get based on what you saw on Twitter on Twitter. It's literally like, I mean, and you, you probably saw this with the fucking thing that happened yesterday morning to my tweet where somebody just, somebody was just like straight up. I, and, and I, and the funny thing is I kind of did this as a little bit of an experiment because I was like, I think I have a pretty concise message here. Let's see if my very concise, very clearly laid out message will generate, if it's on the right topic, if it will generate a complete shit show. And sure enough, I mean, it was like a day later, which is really weird to me. I don't know why that there was like such a lag. But a day later, fucking, I have people literally saying that, um, I had people say that because I critique the rhetoric of people who log on and immediately say shit about Contra every time a video comes out before you could even have watched the uh the video yeah, like yeah, that was my critique was like hey don't engage why do i see so many like other trans people engaging in really really horrific rhetoric towards just a slightly popular trans woman i find that really disturbing and i don't think you should engage in that way critique is one thing this is not this is like an this is like a uh, in my mind an expression of like systemically internalized transphobia that tweet was oh my god like I literally was told that I was, um, based on that tweet alone, I was told that I was an abuser using abuser tactics, that I was a bigot, that I was a transphobe, um, that I didn't listen to trans people, and um, someone came mighty close to implying that I was cis. And I'm just like, yeah, yeah. yeah. It Jesus. looks like no matter how clear you are, if you're engaging in that type of discourse, it's incredibly hard to like have it work. And I don't think it's just bad actors who caused this. I think it's the structure of, of Twitter itself that causes this type of madness, this type of yeah, like definitely. instinct well, to well, just immediately call someone, oh, you're a fucking shithead. Well, the, the thing is as well, it, it's kind of like Twitter is designed from the ground up to be addictive as well. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's like, uh, like game mechanics, you know, the way the notifications pop up, you know, and it shows mm -hmm. you the number and it's a big red bubble. Oh, look, you've got some people interacting with you. So you click on it and you scroll through and, you know, you get this like little rush out of it. Don't yeah, you? the dopamine drip. Totally. Like, absolutely. I mean, like that was um, they, they that was in like, did you play Death Stranding at all by any chance? I, I didn't. No, no, no. They they like make a joke about like like a big con like, I mean, it's kind of a theme of the game. One of the things is like you get you get paid in like like likes basically right and the likes okay. you get to a point in the game where you just have an unfathomable amount of likes they don't even mean anything anymore and people still go for them even though they mean literally yeah. nothing you can't use them on anything they just keep adding up forever and it's just like oh man the likes i gotta get those likes um where it's just like yeah that's what that's that's the thing it is designed it's literally like these are designed by r d departments to push engagement and they I mean, some of it is pseudoscience and some of it is like actual science, but regardless, they use tried and true methods, the same types that you see with loot boxes and, and yeah, game yeah. passes and all that. The same shit is on Twitter. I wouldn't be surprised if they make a fucking, I mean, they, and you know, it's funny. You see that leaking in a little bit on, on Twitch even, uh, with like the achievements. Isn't that fucking weird? Yeah. yeah that's just yeah, kind of weird, definitely. isn't it? Yeah. Wait till Twitter it, it gets is, achievements, yeah. man. Can you imagine? <laughs> oh my if, God. Can you imagine if Twitter had like an achievement that was like own your first friend, and it's just like you have to just you have to like you're like oh like I don't want to hurt my friend's feelings, but I gotta get that achievement. Fuck you, you stupid asshole. <laughs> yes, I got the achievement. Bing pops up. Everybody, all your friends know immediately that you just kicked your friend's ass just for an achievement. And you're like, the things I do. Yeah. No, I I completely agree with all of this, and um. Yeah, it's 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 very frustrating, and you know, I've I because because I've been quite self-reflective of the way that I've used Twitter in the past, and I've kind of come to the conclusion that yeah, fuck, I maybe need to tone it down a bit, and I tweet less now. I tend to just do like one-off takes and stuff, and yeah. just move on. I don't get into like big. I never really did that much anyway, but like I never get into big tweet arguments with yeah. people. Do you know what I mean? Oh yeah, no, absolutely. Like that's something that I've uh, that okay. So do you want to hear my like my working code, my working Twitter code? 
Like, I don't know if you're interested. You want to hear? You want to hear what I do? What my new approach so, is? You want to okay, hear it? Okay, what's your approach? All right, okay, so, so, so what I'm, what I'm thinking about on Twitter is like, okay, first, first and foremost, Twitter is for memes. Like, memes yes. on Twitter, fucking incredible. And that, and yes. that goes both ways because that means that you can do video memes on Twitter, which is good for mm -hmm. us, for streamers. That's amazing. Yeah. We can promote our content. People can find our videos. You can make little you can post your highlights and people will laugh and you could basically have it be like, oh, people who couldn't come and hang out in my stream, now you guys get to have some of the memes too. That slow-mo burp kind of thing, fucking hilarious. Perfect shit for Twitter, you know? Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah, memes, 100%. Um, Self-promotion is like actually good on Twitter. Twitter is basically like, it's basically like a like a, a billboard that can also like reach out and poke people in the face to make them look at your stuff. So if like you're, if you post something and you're like, you write it like a catchy tweet or whatever, and that's a self promo thing, like Twitter will serve that up to lots of people. Lots of people will see your mm -hmm. shit and they might come and watch your stream. So yeah, self promotion, real, real good on Twitter. Third, Twitter is for supporting your fucking friends. I'm not kidding you. Mm -hmm. Memeing with your friends, goofing on them, making little jokes, Tagging them in memes, all this kind of shit. Amazing. Twitter seems to be really, really good at that. Um, and like, but but that's where you have to start to draw the line. Because it's like t chatting and goofing around with your friends and tossing jokes back and forth and talking about how, I don't know, like, you know, Dennis Prager a allegedly molests his dog. Um, I've heard very, very credible rumors that this is the case. Um, it's really fucking concerning to me. I'm, I'm serious. I've heard that. I mean, that yeah, poor dog. Have you seen the dog's mood in those videos? It always looks so yeah, no, he's just Yeah, just, just laying there, you know? Yeah. He's, the dog's at the, at the nightly dicking down. Yeah, it's, tra uh, it's traumatic. It's tired out. <laughs> um, but, but, but yeah, no, no. Yeah. I, 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 I can put, you know, I completely agree. And, and this is something that I've definitely tried to move towards as well. Um, but it's kind of like, I feel like, I feel like it's just everyone else at this point now. Yeah. You know? Well, I mean, that's like, the thing, right? Is like, uh, there's no um like there's no individualistic solution to a collective issue, but individuals mm. like sharing new information can actually address systemic issues. So like the way that I look at it is like, hey, left Twitter sucks. Maybe if we talk about this and teach people like better ways to engage with Twitter. Um, and an oh yeah, one other thing I wanted to add that I I do think is actually really good on Twitter, and and this is the this is the black magic. This is the Twitter black magic, like you mentioned. Dunking yeah. on your enemies is 100% yes. like the best thing you can do on Twitter. Nothing, because here's the thing you can use like Twitter is emotionally manipulative and it gets under your skin and it makes you angry. You use that. You can, you can push that in the direction of people that you really don't like. Like, yeah, I don't yeah. know, you know, uh, like Steven Crowder or Dennis Prager <laughs> or, or, uh, or stuff like that. Because, and the, but the thing is that I think that people need to be careful about is that if you're going to use the like dark magic of Twitter, if you're going to engage in dunking, you have to be very clear about, <laughs> <laughs> I, this sounds stupid, but no, like, I, agree. I mean, I'm with you. can for anybody in the audience who doubts me at the at this moment, if anybody thinks I'm being like mega cringe, you guys know how hellish Twitter is. You know how fucking terrible it gets whenever discourse starts and you don't have fun anymore. You know what I mean? Nobody's having fucking fun. If you want to make Twitter fun, you have to learn when to draw the line between somebody who's like an abject political enemy and who's just you kind of disagree with. Yeah, yeah. Or they've had like the one-off bad take or yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah, well, yeah. And that's the thing like too is like – uh. I, I got really mad in my video. You know this because you watched it, but anybody who didn't see my video, I got really fucking pissed in that video because I'm just like, like we need to do better than this. There is a line that you have to draw and go like, guys, why are you reacting to a 30 second obvi literally by the definition out of context? It's very clear this is a stream. Um, it's very clear that this is like out of the out of probably a five hour video. Every lefty on the internet knows what a stream is. They know how long streams are, and they know that 30 seconds isn't going to be representative of that. So why the fuck are people engaging? You know? Why do they keep going on? Why do they... Why would they not do due diligence before retweeting a 30-second clip being this motherfucking racist piece of shit? This motherfucking... Like, what do you or think like would... The, the Bad Bunny thing, as well, is another good example. Oh, yeah, the, the $5, and then everybody got mad at, like... Uh, got mad at Lottie Blix, I think it was, because her name was yeah, on yeah. as the guest, and they didn't even, 
literally just shut their brain off and didn't even like recognize the um oh i noticed i have your name up here right now um yeah hi my name is chud logic i'm a um allegedly a murderer i killed someone over a cheeseburger <laughs> no i'm kidding but but you know what i mean like like i know for a fact i know for a fact that all of the like a vast majority of the fans of everybody on bread tube and left tube is able to comprehend large ideas. I'm pretty sure that they can also um, comprehend the idea of not calling somebody a racist based off of 30 seconds, even if you don't really like that person, especially if they're a lefty. If it's fucking Ben Shapiro, we all know that. G call him the fuck as a racist. Blow the shit out of his tweet. But why would you do that to somebody who's even like remotely left? Especially yeah. if you could take two seconds, go to their channel and go, oh my God, this person, like for in the example of like, you or 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 Vosh or or even ContraPoints or ContraPoints has like hundreds of videos, but with with streamers, it's like holy shit. There are literally like there's like five days worth of con of like actual watching content available in their playlists. Like maybe I shouldn't like base my opinions, my public opinions that I'm going to put on the public board of Twitter, um, you know, on like 30 seconds, regardless of of how, what you feel about them, um. And so on that one, I'm like, I guess my call is like, I've been shouting at people about like, can you guys stop using Twitter in that way? Because it's really fucking irresponsible. It actually genuinely is. And as we can see with the, uh, with the Joshua, you know, co Collins for Congress situation, there can be some bad, uh, there can be some bad, um, pretty bad outcomes um, from like just ignoring Twitter and just, you know, like leaning into the 100% memory with no, like, or, or leaning into the memory while also engaging in political activism and not drawing lines yeah. between the two. Yeah, definitely. And, and you know, I think, I think it's okay to do a little bit of both, but you've got to draw the line and be like, right, well, if you want to be serious, like you've got to do the serious stuff kind of separately to the memory, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know? or at least have it like clear. Like, I mean, I'm, mm. I'm pretty sure it's, it's very clear for people that when I write a tweet that's like, um, you know, uh, f you know, famous, famous Twitch streamer, Chud Logic killed a man over a cheeseburger in 1989. Um, <laughs> like, I think that like that, that is the, the point where it's like, that's obviously a meme and there's no harm done, but taking, but harm can actually be done by, uh, tarnishing someone's reputation in political spaces based off of like, there were people like an example of this, you know, so that people, so I'm not like too off in the abstract. An example of this was from the ContraPoints video. ContraPoints does multiple characters in her videos and people are like snipped a segment of her of her doing a character and say, this is the thing. That's like if I was doing an impression, it's the same thing as if I was doing an impression of like Ben Shapiro or something and somebody snipped that segment and said, look at Demon Mama. She like, she uses racist rhetoric, but I was like obviously doing an impersonation or doing a character or mocking. Like that can actually become truly damaging to somebody. Um, yeah, you definitely. saw this. I mean, you saw people trying to do this with uh, with Vosh and Vermin Supreme, for example. Like, why would you fucking do that? Like, like what? What? And and I I assume there's then there's a like good faith assumption on my part that says like, oh well, these people aren't bad actors. I assume that not all of them are, right? Certainly some are, but <clears throat> yeah, I mean, because I you know I think it might, it might have been because just a quick side note, like most of the people that criticize Contra all the time, all those kinds of people have ended have just blocked me some reason so yeah. i don't actually interact with a lot of them now but like i did see one person i think they had me blocked but it was like they put all these tweets up and it was like trying to discredit vosh so like vermin supreme would not go on an interview with him is, yeah. is that correct yeah that's what happened a whole bunch of i mean and some of those keep in mind um um some of those were like like literally like I, I I'm pretty sure that they were lifted from the like comedic no context like Vosh account. You know what I mean? Like these no context <laughs> accounts, which are, in my opinion, no context accounts are actually doing praxis. Because by bungling the idea of like by ruining the ability to, of people to like clip chimp by making it so um hilarious and like ridiculous that everyone starts to be more like um doubting of 30 second clips of a, of a minute clip and they're probably more likely to go like look at it you know so like no context accounts go 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 you guys go fucking <laughs> yeah, yeah. crazy no context is shit out of me no context is shit out of chud i'm volunteering chud to be no contexted to death no i'm just kidding do it but, i mean yeah, honestly no, though, i'm up for it I, I genuinely think like the no context accounts that make like jokes and whatever um they they 
they introduce like a passive skepticism of of like clipping streamers um yeah yeah oh, somebody in my chat ha has said uh, that they love no context watch i'm like i do too i love the no i love no context almost any accounts i find those things really funny because it's like how uncharitable can we possibly be to make you look bad and like as a result people know those things exist and it like i said it kind of introduces a collective uh, scrutiny towards clipping, which I think is a good thing because I mean, let's be real, even outside of the like context of like big creators, um, like, like Contra points or Vosh, any one of us who puts a lot of time and effort into making long form content and often to like, I mean, some people literally put a lot of love into doing bits. You know what I mean? There's like, yeah, like yeah. Lance, um, from the surfs, for example, like he does characters all the time. He called in as like a, a fake, uh, he called into like this, the, the Steven Crowder, like, or the, the yeah. blaze hot, the blaze TV hotline as like a, an enraged Republican dad. Can you imagine if like somebody clipped that and tried to frame that as like genuine opinion? It ruins the ability for you to enjoy anything online. If everything is taken like that, um, in my opinion. So I love those types of accounts, um, for that reason, because they like, they introduce a scrutiny and yeah. So for that, I, 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 I think that's a good way to use Twitter, like using a good, like, like truly satirical like memeing and creaming kind of stuff is like hella good on twitter yeah definitely and and you know i think i completely uh, agree with that sentiment and um i think i think the other thing as well is like people because obviously like not everyone's going to want to do that maybe they're going to want to engage a bit more stuff like mm -hmm. that yeah but i think people need to take a good long hard serious look at how they're using twitter and just checking in that it's actually healthy yeah yeah because like, you know, I'm not here to make like an armchair diagnosis of people of going this, that or the other. But in terms of like, is Twitter having like a negative impact on you? I think if a lot of people were honest with themselves, they would admit that, yeah, it fucking is. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And the way that they talk to people and stuff, it's like the anonymity gives gives that sort of additional um, ability to just talk to people like shit when mm. it's not even necessary sometimes right yeah and i mean there are certain times where i like i i genuinely believe i've engaged in a lot of the bad behaviors yeah I'm sure that i too, even yeah. talk about here especially that like holy shit like the amount of times i've like like held myself from tweeting something really fucking mean at somebody who was really annoying the shit out of me even if they were rightfully annoying the shit out of me like there's there's gotta be like there's got to be self-control and that is the thing that yeah. i would say like if for the average person who's not a creator and not like like having like cultivating an audience but is just participating in twitter the best thing that you can do is rational self-control when you tweet just just ask yourself before you tweet is this advancing the conversation or am i engaging in my like just base frustration at somebody yeah because you can always just stop talking you can literally yeah, yes yeah yes yeah, you could just Definitely. stop. You can just stop. And I've done that before. Like, there have been people like, oh, my God. And also, you can also just be dismissive. And that's okay. Sometimes that's okay. Somebody, for example, an example of this, and I, I always point to this one because it made me laugh, which was some guy wrote fucking two paragraphs on my um on, remember my remember my meme that i did about how like i was like the scandal of the century that vosh and, and cyber witch lexi and shoe on head don't follow me um oh, yeah, that yeah. medium article i wrote like 100 percent stupid meme it, for some reason it blew up it actually succeeded so I, i'm proud of that meme but somebody re replied to that thing two people did like really notable replies one person replied like eight eight tweets in immediate succession with clips from a different article that wasn't mine and they were critiqued they were freaking out about the article and it was the other one the one that i was making fun of they were screaming yeah, yeah. at me about it they're like you're fucking lying about people i'm like <laughs> and my response was just like i was just like oh that's the wrong one that's the one i was making fun of we're kind of in agreement and then somebody else came in and was like isn't shoe on head like a fascist or something and like my response was just hey Buddy, I really think you should probably go to bed. And that ended it. <laughs> ended it. Nothing happened after that. They were just like, Ugh. like, well, how are you going to respond to me? Just being like, it sounds like you need a nap, my friend. Like, holy shit. Um, yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's, yeah. It, it's, and, and, yeah. Oh, it's, it's nuts. I, I've, I've had it before as, as well. Like things just like that. And people were like, they're heated and they reply to you. And then you get a bit heated and you reply. And it's just like, 
escalates and escalates and escalates. And, and, you know, you can end up, you're like fucking 10 tweets into this absurd argument. No one's even looking at it anymore. No one's reading this fucking dumb argument you have. And, yeah, and you then and you're then pounding their head in with a fucking other. like fucking bowling pin, <laughs> bashing their skull in. <laughs> and it's like for, for what for what purpose you know yeah um, you know and, and and yeah i've self-reflected about this so much recently and and you know i think a lot of my messaging that i want to do now is just about making sure people are trying to be as healthy as they can when they're using it and not getting involved in this tomfoolery you know yeah yeah and it is it is really a lot of tomfoolery and the thing is is like it's one of those it, it's like the um it's like the the the, the 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 like laughing Wojak face mask with the crying behind. Like yes. that is and 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 uh, this is a call out to every person who says that they don't say they don't take Twitter seriously, including the 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 big man himself, Vosh. I know that he gets emotionally bothered by certain things on Twitter. So everybody should stop being fucking mask Wojak and be real about the fact that everyone can get fucking emotionally compromised when it comes to Twitter unbelievably easily it is the pro yeah. of all of the platforms it gets under your skin um yeah it, it really does in a way that like e even like i don't know like with facebook it wasn't as bad as it is with twitter twitter's like a whole other level yeah you know? and I, I think i think the big difference is like even in like some of the facebook groups i was in there was a maximum of like you know, 20,000 people or something like that. So only a certain amount of people would see your tweets. I look at some of my tweets and it's like, you know, hundreds of thousands of people have seen them. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And it's, and I think you, you made a good point. If that people, what was it you said about people using Twitter like it's Facebook? Yeah, people use Twitter like it's Facebook. But the thing is, is like on Facebook, like, I mean, I guess in the modern day of Facebook, they've introduced some level of, like, public visibility through groups and stuff, but it's still, it's still incredibly, like, weird. But the way that, fa the, for the core function of Facebook is you have a group of friends that you manually add. You know that person in real life. And we all know there's still Facebook drama. I remember, like, in, like, late high school into college, like, getting into political arguments on Facebook with people that I knew, and sometimes you get mad and bump heads, but the reality is, like, on, on Facebook, you add those people that you know through one channel or another. On Twitter, and, and those are the only people who are going to see your shit, with very few exceptions. Yeah. Occasionally, some dumb fuck who's a friend of a friend might bumble in and comment if you have the right visibility settings. On Twitter, it's not like that at all. Yeah, there's that, there's, like, this, like, friend thing where you like follow or counter follow or whatever but that's not really what it is like what what the like following or quote unquote friends that you make on twitter are like oh wow i really like the like the little like post-it notes that you've been sticking up in the middle of town square lately and i always come back to look for your post-it notes all that does is like it like lets you find their post-it notes easy but it's not your it's not just your friends if one of their friends retweets it to all their friends suddenly a bunch of people that you don't even know and have no actual connection to and no control over are commenting on it so people use it like it's facebook they're like man it really bothered me what becky said earlier and then it's <laughs> fucking not only is it on becky's on becky's feed it's also on fucking her mom karen's feed who's then retweeting it to all of her like army of fucking like angry mothers who are then posting you like on their like hidden instagram groups and it's like oh shit all of a sudden this like little like quip that i made about somebody who i'm like mm, they made me angry is all of a sudden the most like it's been propagated to everyone in the world and everyone knows how much you fucking hate becky yeah, no, I complete. Yeah, it's 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 ridiculous. But that's the thing is, is people don't understand that dynamic, do they? No, you know? and it's like, but how, they don't use do it like that. To... And that's the thing. No. Not even the best Twitterers. Like, okay, yeah. the only Twitterers who actually use it like 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 use Twitter as Twitter and not use Twitter as Facebook is like people who have um, like managers. You know what I mean? Because yes, then they're removed yeah, yeah. and their manager can say, hey, I don't think that's a good idea. Like this might damage our PR because that is what Twitter is. Twitter is not built for humans. It's built for brands. And it yes. and, and the thing is, is they, they, they tell you it's built for humans and you have a little person shape, but it's not. You are a brand the moment you stepped onto, onto Twitter in the eyes of Twitter. And Twitter treats you mm -hmm. like a brand because it's built for advertising brands. And, and so, like, you have to realize that and go, okay, like, uh, is this, is, what is this platform going to be interpreting if I'm having, like, a shit fit 
and like me and my friend are bashing each other's skulls in with with bowling pins and 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 like metal water bottles and shit and like we're just pounding each other's teeth in and like then twitter is like ah yes this is incredibly good brand material everyone in the world should know about this so that you can promote your brand and it's just an immediate snapshot of you just bashing the worst moment of your life <laughs> like you've got like shit and blood all over your shirt pounding in the face of your friend and that's the snapshot everybody gets of you and and or some people will get of you and the rest of them might have a totally different snapshot and that's what we're like uh vosh has mentioned this in tree in, st in streams recently which is what got me thinking about it is he said he felt he keeps feeling like he's being gaslit by twitter well you kind of are in a way you're not actually being gaslit it's just that on Twitter, there are 900 different factions. Every single individual that you come in contact with has a different understanding of you, uh, more so than even in the normal, like in normal life. In life, everybody has their little perceptions of what you are, but you're able to be who you are for the most part and control. Like if you're at work, you wear your work clothes and it's pretty clear that you're at work wearing your work clothes. On Twitter, it doesn't matter. It's just all the time. It's just a camera running in your life, no matter what you're doing. I mean, yeah, if you no, use no. it that way, if you use it that way. Yeah, and I think I think that's the thing is like people need to realize like there's there's so much you can do to help. Like like you said, you know, if you're getting into a spicy conversation with someone, you can literally just stop replying. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like it's easier than real life. It's not like you're stuck there and you have to converse with someone you're having an awkward conversation with. You can literally just stop replying. Like, what are they going to do? Yeah. Mute I mean, the conversation, then you're gone. Yesterday, somebody was like. They kept tweeting at me their opinions, and I and I literally said like, "Hey, I am really not interested in your opinions on videos, on any video essay, let alone this one. You know, so I just yeah, don't yeah. care." And then they responded by like, "Oh, don't you think that's problematic?" Blah blah blah. And I just was like, "Block." I asked you very nicely, said I don't want to hear your opinion, and you'd continue to subject it to me. You could just do that. You can just mute people or block them. But I yeah. will say. <laughs> One thing that I personally find very hard, and I do, I will advocate for people to still try to do this anyway, but I do think it's incredibly hard, is, um, and this was, I was tuned on to this actually by, I got to give credit for this little, like, flash of, of insight to Matt Chrisman. Um, Matt Chrisman did a, his, like, he has this new thing that's called the Kush Vlog that he does on Twitch. Um, and he did an episode, like he did literally, he, he was talking about acid communism. I think it was called the, 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 the stream was actually called like cy cyber mental Ronin. And it was like, he, he literally did acid. And then when he, when his trip ended, he was just like, I've had a revelation about Twitter. And his revelation was just that like, uh, like every, every single moment, all we see is these, like the spiciest takes imaginable. And we always want to engage with them. And he was just like, just wait, just try this. Just try not replying and letting it be and i i oh actually realized that like i i wasn't doing that every time i saw a spicy take i felt the need to be like no you're wrong and like but you just cannot you can just go that's whoop, so true swoop. that's so true it's so true you can just scroll past it i do that all the time like yeah. i see this drama starting to erupt like the, you know the lottie blix tweet about the bait bros that's one of them um, that was one that i literally did this i looked at that and i went Nope, it's gone. It left yeah, my life. Exactly. It's not in my yes, head anymore. Exactly. That's so true. And and because then it's it's so funny because I did exactly the same thing. I was like, I I read it and I was like, okay, I can understand like, lottie has got an, their, their opinion and that's fine. But it's kind of like a bit spicy and a bit provocative. But then I thought, but the vape bros can be provocative too. So yeah, whatever. You know, have your opinion and off you go. Yeah. And, and I moved on and that was it. But then like I saw people replying, people like screenshotting it, going, look at this, this is a bad take, blah, blah, blah. And it's just like, why bother? Yeah. You know? And it's, it's a natural urge though on Twitter, right? Because like the thing is, it's like, I mean, like I don't want to over, I don't want to project onto every other person, but let's be real. Most people on the left are pretty opinionated, you know? Like, mm -hmm. especially if you're active on the Twitter left, you're there because you have lots of opinions or you'd like to engage with other people's opinions. So it, it can be, it requires an active, excuse me, an active awareness of what you're doing on Twitter or else you just will slip into this because of course you're like, oh, this is so unfair. Like you see a tweet yeah. that's like, or, or like, what, you want to know what one of the hardest ones was for me to like not comment on? And I'll be, I'll cop to this 100%. Was the fucking spat between like Gushian and Vosh. Because I'm like, ah, like this is so needlessly like stupid. And I wanted to comment. And I said, you know what? 
They can fucking handle it. I'm not doing this. Yes. Swoop. Gone. Yes. Gone. My mental health goes <laughs> boop. My brain got three <laughs> times bigger that day. I swear to God. <laughs> yeah, that's so true. And and I commented on this as well. And and you know, I think that like this. I don't think this is referencing you you so much because I, I know that you know you've um kind of met met Vosh and stuff. Yeah. So it's not it's not it's not quite quite the same. But like you've got this trend of people who literally just watch someone's content. Okay. Yeah. But then they feel like they're duty bound to defend their honor across the entirety of Twitter all of the time. Yeah, and right? you know what would be better, honestly, if you have a big enough take with someone's fucking Twitter post, take it to stream. All of these people yeah. are streamers. Just rant about it on stream because you'll get your thoughts out in a more consistent manner, and then that person can reply to it if they really fucking feel like it. Or else you've gotten your frustrations out, and it hasn't ruined everybody's timelines. <laughs> It's like, yeah, I, I yeah. want people to stop throwing trash on, like, I've realized, oh my God, we've all just been throwing trash onto our own floor. And it's just like, yeah. I want people to stop, stop throwing trash on the floor. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And, 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 you know, it's, it's just like, you know, you, you, I think the key thing is, is, is exactly what you've said. Just, just don't, just don't reply to spicy takes, just ignore it, you know? Yeah. Um, and I mean, occasionally I, I, yeah. there's like something egregious enough that you can reply to mm. it, but let's be real. If we were to like, you know, you know, let's make it a cooking stream. If we were to reduce, reduce down the sauce of Twitter, you know, to its most purest form, the like the bad takes, the actual bad takes that aren't just misinterpreted or slightly poorly worded are like there's like five. There's like five bad takes that have gone on on Twitter in the last month that are like truly bad takes um, on the left. Now, the meanwhile, on the right of Twitter, we have the a, 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 like somebody took a fucking fire hose and just dipped the other end of it into the sewer. And they're just like. <laughs> Just fucking blasting shit. Like, it's a nightmare. Have, if, if you even go into any of these, like, fucking, if you go into the Obamagate, uh, like, tag, oh, my God. You want to find people to dunk on? If you're mad and you're just looking to take out your frustrations, just click on one of those things and you will find an infinite amount of people who are your abject political enemies that you can dunk on all day and you will never cause any infighting. You'll never become emotionally compromised because they're fuckheads that you don't give a shit about. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. I and, and the thing is, oh, and they're is, also is, they're also actively shit slinging, is what I should say. They're not just people you don't like. They're people that are fucking blasting the internet full of garbage. Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. No, 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 it's fine. I was just gonna say, like, yeah, I really do advocate for that. And there have been times I remember, like, in January, I made a decision. I'm not gonna get involved in lefty Twitter shit. It's pointless. I've come to realize. I'm just gonna dunk on chuds or whatever, you know. Yeah. But then, like. Lo and behold, a week later, there I was getting involved in some fucking drama. But now, if I see drama erupting and I want to talk about it, I like you say, I just take it to stream and I talk about it there. Because yeah. you can elaborate on your thoughts, you can discuss it, you're not trying to fit your opinion into some fucking bullshit tweet that's going to be misinterpreted by some fuckhead anyway, you know? Yeah. And, and I think there's another there's another way that we can look at it if, if me, like, bonking people on the heads and going, stop, 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 stop. Like, that, that approach... <laughs> may work for some but for those who that does not work and who this is not convincing to let me remind you that most people right now as in statistically most people in the world are trapped inside in a quarantine mm -hmm. they are their emotional states are not good everyone no matter how smart and big brain you are i bet noam chomsky's fucking having anxiety right now <laughs> like like everybody is fucking not doing so great and and as a result no one is going to be going on to twitter and like having a good time and then you also have the structure of Twitter, which incentivizes negative interact or not necessarily negative interaction, but provocative interaction of any type. Mm -hmm. um, and then you also just have like this. Uh, this is like where it gets into the like sort of political meta of like you also have a lot of people on left Twitter who are genuinely um, marginalized in their real life and don't feel like they have a voice. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's kind of. I kind I kind of hope to conf 
convey to people not to like jokerify themselves not to go like the joker like the joker route you know because like the joke there was a lot of people joking about the jokerification and shit but like when you go full black pill and you're just like you're just like i have no voice or my only voice is twitter this is where i'm yeah, gonna yeah. make my stands it is unhealthy for you because twitter is it wants you to do that it wants you to be jokerified it wants you to go yeah i just need to lash out at my enemy and then you just take aim and you're like contra points that's the one bam or whoever yeah. else it is doesn't matter who it is could be anybody could be fucking uh could be fucking gushin or, or xander hall or me anybody fucking anybody you just are like that i see this is the uh this is the fucking uh this is the bad behavior that i see in the world and i have this is my only way that i can call it out but in truth you're that you that's not actually your only way to call it out. There are other more complicated, less immediately satisfying ways, but they like the system is designed to get your frustrations out in a way that's profitable to Twitter in a long, in a very big way. But Twitter is so big and it has and its its machinations are so uh complicated that you are just you're a side effect essentially. You're causing a fight with your friends is only going to end up hurting you. It's not going to hurt Twitter at all. It's not going to hurt. It's not going to make political advocacy. In fact, you would be mm -hmm. better to somehow find a way to avoid expending energy on Twitter and expend it elsewhere on things that will change the world. So that's the other way. That's the not da, 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 shut up way. That's the like compassionate way of looking at this thing is like people are struggling right now emotionally and Twitter as a tool is tempting them into the wrong outcomes. And we need to find a way to not be tempted into that outcome, in my opinion. Yeah, no, I um, I completely, one hundred percent agree with you, and I, I think that it is a it is a really a really good point, and, and I try and have some degree of compassion certainly now. Like if if I see someone and they're tweeting very angrily, I just take a moment and I think, well, look, hey, what what could potentially be going on in their life outside of Twitter? Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. And I think that's important to try and remember as well is before you, you know, fire back because someone's come at you with a bit of fucking hostility, just take a moment to think, what what could they be going through themselves? You know, yeah. someone could be having a bad day. It could be as simple as that. And they've come on and they've been really abrasive more so than normal. Is quote tweeting them with like some dunk, assuming it's a lefty, obviously, yeah. is quote tweeting them with a dunk actually going to solve anything or help anyone? No, you're just going to make their day shitter. Well, and you then know? your day is going to get bad too, because inevitably, like if they have any platform or friends, which they do, everybody does. And there's like, there are some accounts that are like literally like five followers. And at that point, just don't engage, but like there are, <laughs> yeah, <definitely. laughs> just don't like, but, but like inevitably, if you quote tweet somebody, they're going to reply, their friends are going to see that any mutuals that you two happen to have, like I said before, are going to see that. I, I remember I'm trying to remember. I can't. I, I mean, it doesn't matter to name names, but I remember I had two mutuals that were fighting for four hours one night, and my and I I literally just was bored and wanted to see funny things on Twitter, but I couldn't because they're because all that Twitter's algorithm was serving me was their spat, and it was the most infuriating thing. I wanted to kill both yeah, of them yeah. because I'm like I love you guys, but you guys are both being stupid and it's clogging my thing, and that's through no fault of theirs necessarily. Besides engaging in the in the dialogue on Twitter. Yeah, I mean, there have been times when, like, I've seen two people fighting that I don't know both of them, and I've literally typed out a tweet like, come on, let everyone chill out. Like, let's just chill. But then I'm like, actually, do you know what? I don't want to insert myself here because this might go down the wrong way. But you do just want to say, come on, this is silly. Like, you've quite tweeted each other 20 times now, and you've not resolved anything. What's the point in all of this, right? Yeah, I mean, isn't the microcosm, like, the, the true, like, lesson learned of this is just, like, scrolling down Lord of Patriarchy's uh, wall as he, as he, re <laughs> as he, quote, retweets your, your, t the same, like, two tweets that you made, like, 15 <laughs> times in a row to zero likes. He got, like, no <laughs> likes on any of them. And I'm just like, no what are you? No one's listening. No yeah. one's listening to him. Everyone has probably muted you because they don't want to see your like your like weird dick measuring contest. You know what I mean? And meanwhile, yeah, exactly. on your side, the to you're using a totally different way, which is just letting him just chuck shit and then look po pointing and laughing at the stupidest examples. And you're fucking rolling in likes and retweets. And it's just yeah. like that right there is the perfect example of like, oh. Yeah, it's really easy to get yourself into a position where you think you're having like a, a big brain discussion on Twitter, but you're actually just kind of like going like all over the place. And it's just like, 
It's yeah, unbelievable definitely. to me how bad it gets sometimes. I, I really have seen, like this weekend especially, I have seen, I think I, think I described it as just like uh, the most intelligent people you know being reduced to toddlers. And like, yeah, definitely. Oh my God. Like, holy shit. I, I don't know. I see people that I'm like, like I will watch one of their streams and I'll be like, wow, I feel so lucky that I get to share the planet with somebody that smart. And then I go onto Twitter and they're just like, you're a stupid fuck mo monkey. I hate you. And I'm just like, oh, never mind. <laughs> um, yeah. And, and sorry, one more thing before, before we uh, maybe wrap this up is yeah. I want to talk a little we bit. We can go about, as long um, as you want, by the way. I don't mind. Yeah. yeah, I got yeah plenty okay, of that's cool. No, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's, let's talk about a bit about this then. So another thing I've noticed is like people get like really mad about super Twitter specific things. Mm. So it's like someone will, 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 will say, Oh, I don't like, um, I don't like it when people, people when, when content creators do this. Right. Mm. And then they'll get these replies and people are like, are you vague posting about a content creator that I like? What are you doing? And it's like, who, who fucking cares? Like, what is wrong with you? Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, I think part of it is like, uh, and, and I think part of that points to like the, the thing that I was talking about earlier, which is like everybody, everybody on left Twitter, especially specifically on left Twitter. I can't speak for the larger Twitter because I do know there are a lot of boomers on Twitter and I don't think they know anything at all. But um let alone about Twitter, but on left Twitter, we all do know a little bit that this platform is manipulative. And mm. I think that's part of what drives that behavior of like people to be like, how dare you vague tweet my favorite creator? Because they're like, oh no, this is disinformation about somebody that I care about and like. And it's like, no, <laughs> yeah. no, it's somebody thinks that this is Facebook and they're being catty at best. That's it. Yeah. Now, I do believe that there are examples where that goes out of control, like where that is no longer like what's happening. But in the examples that you're talking about where people will swarm and be like, whoa, nice vague posting, bro. I'm going to snitch and like tag. And I'm just like, yeah, it's, it, it is, it is true cringe. And like the thing is though, have you ever felt that urge a little bit? Like to be like, mm, yeah, of like, course. you know, so like, but you, you, so there's that, or everybody has that urge a little bit to like defend the things that they like. Everybody's like that. You know, if somebody yeah. comes in shitting on your fucking favorite hentai, you're like, no, I love that one. The dicks are great. Um, <laughs> but it's like, but it's like, uh, it's like, so you, everybody has that urge to a little bit, but then you mix in the like t personalities thing. And then you mix in parasociality and then you mix yeah. in like true stands. And it's like, oh God, like, I think there's like a, um, there's a really infamous, I don't remember the guy's name. He's a Destiny stan. Like, infamous Destiny stan. Who, like, name searches oh, is Destiny. Guy, is it the guy with, like, he's got, like, a beard? Uh, yeah, yeah. I think that's, I don't, I, I, I he has, like, a name that begins with P or something. And, and like, yes. he's infamous. I know exactly who you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, and he, like, name searches Destiny. And, if, and he will just, like, white knight, like, as hard as you could possibly fucking imagine. Those people exist, and you cannot control them at all. They will just ap appear as if like they're like uh they're like it's like it's like the medieval understanding of like how how flies and like maggots like like meat turns into maggots. It's like Twitter turns into weird stands that you have no control over. They will just it, it, they just appear like out of the ether, and so those people exist. And when you mix those people in, that's when things get really toxic. If there's no scrutiny applied to like oh shit, like they're gonna be like any time the word destiny comes up, you might be like quoting a fucking like alfred lord tennyson poem that has the word destiny in it and they come in and they're like what the fuck are you talking about <laughs> do you even watch any of his fucking content what the fuck debate me now debate destiny i mean not me go debate destiny call him call him on the phone settle this i i, I actually had that once when i i tweeted about the fact that destiny was um going you remember when destiny like had to go at carl kalinsky's dead dad Oh God! Called him a fucking shithead, or, or called him like a fucking idiot, or something. And it, you know, it was just a really yes. dumb thing that he said. And I tweeted about that, and this dude was coming at me in my replies. And I thought, how the fuck did you know about this? I don't even know who you are. And yet, of course, he name searched Destiny. Yeah. Like what the fuck? Can That's you like holy shit? Do. And like, yeah, I think it is. I think it is like a certain amount of that is like. Oh, like this is going to happen no matter what you do, no matter how you engage on Twitter, a certain amount of that type of person is going to exist. Like, I mean, they just, they just do. We've seen them online on all platforms, 
But we have to be careful that like the mass of left Twitter doesn't become that way. Because let's yeah. be real, like, I mean, unless we are, are saying this is like a, a sinking ship and there's no way to like, there's no way to improve the discourse, which, hey, maybe that's the case. I, I don't claim to have full knowledge of this. Maybe Twitter is like a, a completely unsalvageable platform. But what I can say is that um, if that's not the case, if we're not declaring it a total loss, I think that we could be benefit from not trying to fight other people's battles for them. Um, yes, definitely. And because and, at the end of the day, the other thing I think as well is inevitably these stands are like fucking 50 follower Andes and they're going out defending Twitter accounts that have got like 30,000 followers. And it's like... I'm pretty sure they can do that themselves. Yeah. You know? Oh, and somebody, somebody in my chat just asked. Uh, this is uh, Elsie Hupp from my chat asked, "What do you mean by someone thinking that Twitter is Facebook?" Um, and so I wanted to make sure that I was clear on that. Maybe I wasn't like clear in the way that I described that, but I think it ties into this particular aspect as well, which is that people like, and I, I don't know exactly why this happens. I can't explain to you the, the the mentality entirely behind it. But people go onto Facebook and they, I mean, they go on. I even just fucking fucking slipped up. But they go onto Twitter and they believe like, okay, yeah, I'm hanging out here with my friends. And sometimes that's because some of the people you follow actually are your friends. Others are content creators. But the way that it's served to you, it's as if they're all your friends. You're just chit chatting in a conversation with your friends. And so people will. But, but that's not the case. On Twitter, everything is public by default. Any fucking Joe Schmo can can wander in and just retweet your your tweet. I've literally, I remember some guy, some I, I said something about uh, Trump at one point and some fucking Bubba like literally retweeted me and then I had for an hour, my comments were full of him and his followers posting pictures of like World War II era planes at me with like the like i identify as a b-17 bomber like and i'm just like like it, it leaves you stunned because you're like oh yeah i forgot literally anyone could come across my tweet and it increases with each person who retweets your tweet which feels good because you're like yeah i'm getting the retweets each time you get one of those nice feeling retweets there's another there's a higher chance that some random nutbag dipshit picks up your tweet and then freaks out about it so that's what I say, like people use um, use Twitter like it's Facebook. And the same thing I think applies to seeing um, like creators getting into a spat or people saying vague quote unquote things about your favorite creators is like, oh, you follow that creator and you see their posts all the time. So it feels like you're friends with them like you mm -hmm. would be on Facebook, but you're not. They're, you're following their public platform. You're following like what's essentially like, uh, like I don't know, like... I, I can't even find another example of it. It's like if you were trying to communicate through like the the bell icon on YouTube. That's basically what Twitter is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Well, it's really surreal for me because you know um, I'm at the stage now where I've gone on Twitter and I've seen people arguing about me, and I'm not even involved in the conversation, right? Like yeah. I might have replied in one area of the tweet, but then in a separate tweet thread that's gone down. There's two people like arguing about me and I just want to step in and say, can you not just stop arguing about me? Like, I don't give a fuck about any of this. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I, I honestly like dread the day. Fucking... Yeah. Yeah. It, it is so surreal. And people like, you know, they sort of put, put motives onto what you're doing and they say, well, the thing is with Logic's content is as you, as you can see, it's got the potential to de-radicalize, blah, 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 blah. And I'm just like, but that's not why I'm doing it. So don't, defend me on that basis you know and it's like it made me think about you know when people go on about contras like the great de-radicalizer you know yeah yeah and it's like how would she feel if she saw that like would she want people on twitter saying that about her like and it gets a bit weird and that's why i think you shouldn't go out and defend your creators because at the end of the day you should let the person advocate for what their own position is on stuff you know, it's not up to you to decide what they're doing, why they're doing it. And, and you know, do you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. No, no, I agree. With, I couldn't agree with you more. Like, I think, um, I think that's like, like the clashing fan bases thing. I mean, God, mm. I don't even know where this shit like came from, like where it, where it originated from, or if it's even possible to know where it originated from, but it is definitely like, I mean, God, I can't even like, I'm trying to think of like something that would be relevant, but like, 
I, see, it blows my mind because I'm like, what would people argue about me about? Because I'm just a mm. person, you know what I mean? And yeah, I say things yeah, on the yeah. internet, but like, I think most of my things you could just talk to me about and be like, hey, I have this problem with your fucking take. And I would say, yeah, you're an idiot. You didn't listen. Bam. Here you go. Here's the clip. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, even if I was yeah, kind of yeah. rude about it, it would still resolve the issue in like 25 seconds mm -hmm. versus like two people for hours going back and forth. Like, I mean, c can you believe it? Like, j this is not an unbelievable thing, but there are probably people who have had arguments about, like, I don't know, like, I mean, contrapoints, for example, for days. They've probably gone yeah. back and forth yeah. for yeah. days of their life, and they've probably been emotionally disturbed about it for days of their life. And, like, the idea of anybody ever doing that over me is, like, like, don't, just, what the fuck? Just, like, yeah, no, yeah. like, I'm a dumb fuck. Like, I, like like drink shitty diet coke half the time and have a few 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 hot takes occasionally but like please please don't like wage a fucking internet war and ruin your life over like somebody else's opinion over me or something like let them if they're a dumb fuck just fucking let them be a dumb fuck like that's fine they can come bother me i i think there are like exceptions to this rule but again i don't know that they apply like 99 percent of the time like i'm pretty likely to step up if i see like a really pernicious rumor or something going around by yeah, somebody yeah, yeah. like for example if some fucking asshole was like accusing you of murder or something well i mean okay not murder because you did do that but um <laughs> like if somebody was accusing you of like i don't know like sexual assault and like like and like they were just like oh i knew they were a malicious actor and didn't have any evidence or whatever and i was like hey that's not cool like if you're gonna come forward if you're gonna talk about something like that you might want to be really serious about it and not just flippant like i might say something like that that's something that i would be like hey like that's a pretty major accusation maybe you should take that through different yeah, channels than yeah. twitter but the thing is is like i think that people rolled from again um i and this is another angle that i have that's like I think some people don't have which is like i've been through this like cycle of like shit on on this site and on other sites like this exact pattern of like weird parasociality in particularly in niche communities is something that happens a lot on sites like this and it happened on tumblr too um and i know like some people would like hook this into like the cancel culture thing i don't know if that's a useful frame to discuss it through anymore just because of how like how distorted the conversation has been but there are some similar elements there's like some idea that like oh um this creator who compared to me seems really really big and important but like ultimately they like live in an apartment and just like do videos you know for their living and might make a good might make an okay living for in the case of some but others really don't make that good of a living and you just think they yeah. do um like i think people like lose scope of like oh there's a person that does that thing you know not and and it, maybe that maybe maybe part of that is the fact is the thing i said about twitter being about brands is that maybe even people don't realize that they're forgetting that they're interacting with humans on a website like that um and that's the thing that gets to me is when the like rhetoric starts to be so dramatic and so outrageous for the purpose of getting those clicks mind you that it starts to become like oh god like you're actually harming people like when death threats and like fucking major accusations of like racism and stuff i'm like guys like this is not don't hash this kind of shit out on twitter of all places especially with people who are ostensibly on the same political side as you it seems incredibly hor horrible to do yeah definitely I, I, and you're right about the content correct like the thing is is because people the most visible people at the top people like philosophy tube contrapoints h1 guy sean you know they are genuine genuinely earning like what i would consider like a, a really good living from doing what they do yeah um but it's like that is the exception not the rule and like the vast majority of content creators that you see will be making enough to pay rent to buy groceries to pay their bills and maybe have like a few beers at the weekend or something mm. and and that's it you know it's not like they're making mega bucks doing what they do um and and, and yeah but people treat people treat creators like that's the case yeah do, do you know what i mean yeah some uh, um um uh, my, my girlfriend actually just said in my chat um it's a very precarious living situation at any point like you could be squished by a number of things that's 100 percent true like for example i mean Vosh is in a very unique situation that when his YouTube channel went down for a little bit of time, he was able to pivot fine. 
because of the size of his platform and because of the size of his advocacy. But most, yeah. the vast majority of, of content creators could never do that. If their, if their channel went down for 90 days, that could be the end of their career. And we've seen this. Like, we've seen this with, like, some of the traditional lol, like, lol cows, like fucking uh, DSP and um and wings of redemption like those types of people who like yeah, yeah they blew their entire career up they went from fucking like i mean like like i know dsp is like particularly like not very intelligent with his money but like like i mean these people will buy like houses and shit and then yeah. all of a sudden like there some shit happens they accidentally play a, a clip of an anime on stream and they're down for 90 days with no income um and that can really fuck you up and also there's even bigger things like that like i mean what happens if what happened if Twitter was just or if a uh, Twitch was just like oh we're getting rid of the politics category altogether like we don't want yeah, Twitter we don't want politics you can't speak about politics anymore yeah you, that would fuck so many people that would even fuck Destiny and Destiny is like yeah. I mean obviously he would be able to weather it because he's a a significant outlier but the vast majority of content creators might seem like they have a platform and they have a platform of a type but it is by no means like. It is by no means something that keeps them away from preca precarity. It just means right now I might be able to afford food, but that could change at any moment because just because you're making money on 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 stream enough to like pay your bills does not mean you're it's enough that you could weather your career collapsing or something like that. Yeah, definitely. You know, I've um like literally just in a position where I'm doing this full full time, and it is like literally, um, I'm literally just. At, I can af I can afford my bills. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah. I can just about afford my bills. And and you know, I've got like a small amount of money set aside now. So if there's like a disaster, I can survive for a bit. But it's like I'm talking weeks. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. if things went really bad, I would just have to go and get a fucking job, like it's a normal fucking regular Joe job. Well, and you know, there's, there's no stability or security doing this at all. People underestimate like, and I don't mean to like. I know like. Uh, you know, we could talk about this, but I don't want to be like, like trying to like suck the dick of, of streamers and say we're like some sort of phenomenal workers or whatever. But like, keep in mind that like a lot of streamers produce a, 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 an incredible amount of like actual content. And if you mm. get banned from a platform, that shit can disappear. Like you cannot yeah, even yeah. have your old stuff. So even if you had like, unlike, I mean, and this can happen even to YouTubers, by the way, like if their channel gets taken down and they didn't have like a backup of all their videos, or even if they did, they might never be able to reestablish a revenue route to make money off of this potentially really, really, really hard work that they did. And I feel like, you know, um, like, I feel like I put a decent amount of work into, into the stuff that I do, a lot of research and thought and whatnot, but, like, I don't think it's, like, phenomenal, but, like, would, God, it would be fucking terrible. Can you imagine if just, like, five years of your life, like, say you were streaming for, yeah. like, five years to get to a point where you were s stable and then just disappears overnight? And that is a reality for most streamers and most content creators on the internet. It's kind of terrifying um and it means that you would have to suddenly pivot your entire thank you so oh, i just got a sub thank you so much for the sub i appreciate that thank you um but it is one of those things where it's like like oh god it could like it, it can disappear very quickly and on top of that you w you would need to pivot your entire career and if if you get fired from a job that we all know that that can be a life-changing thing somebody getting fired yeah. from their job sometimes that literally like one job firing can lead directly to poverty like they go from high on life something bad happens or like they go through a divorce and they start failing at their job they get f fired and they can never get back into the work again it can ruin your life imagine that but also like there's no other options you know because like if your channel gets destroyed you might not be able to pivot to another platform yeah and and the other thing is this, as, and as an aside to that as well is like there's people out there that are waiting for that fucking day do you know what i mean absolutely like I've literally seen people like openly advocating like on the ContraPoints thing. And this was what I was talking about in the tweet that fucking blew up and blah, 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 was that I've seen people like being like, could somebody just take this fucking, this fucking bitch's platform? And I'm just like, guys, like that's, that's pretty extreme. Like if you disagree with one or two things, like I get it. And you can be firm in those disagreements and those critiques, but holy shit. Like, do you, do you know what you're advocating for? Like, do you know yeah. what you're saying? And do you know what if that creator happens to see that which they do we all do we all see that shit um like we all see the negative stuff that comes our way and like when you when it's from like people who are ostensibly on your own side that is fucking emotionally it's terrifying it is actually very scary um for a lot of people and so like i don't know i just i don't understand 
Like, I mean, I do understand it to a degree, but I would advocate that people fucking think for a second about the humans that are behind the screen. And I know that's kind of a boomer saying, but like, holy shit, right? Well, 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 yeah, it's true. And the other thing as well, for like, for lefties, it's like, you know, the the alternative to this, right? Mm -hmm. Because you're not going to say, you know, as a lefty, generally speaking, you're not going to become a capital owner. You're not going to set up a business, right? Right. Like, that's generally not something you're going to do. I'm not saying like gatekeep the left or anything, but like, if you're going to go like set up a restaurant as a lefty, yeah, that seems a bit kind of like I don't know, you know, unless you're going to set up a co-op or something, I guess. But yeah, I mean, people do that sort of that sort of thing. And but again, uh, and I will say, building a co-op is hard. But yeah, go ahead, go ahead. But no, so I, well, the only point I wanted to make is like the alternative to like doing this really is to go and be a fucking wage slave for someone. Mm-hmm. And it's like, how, how is that better than trying to earn a crust, making content and entertaining people and being a bit happier with your right. life? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I mean, also there is, there is a, there is, this is a unique angle. And again, I don't want to fuck it. I'm not trying to stroke the dick of streamers and make us feel like we're some kind of crazy laborers or whatever, whatever. Everything is, people do labor in all kinds of different ways. But I will say that, like, there is a unique um, challenge in streaming um, and YouTube, for example, which is that you are expected to come with the content. You will not get paid until you have made a lot of content. Almost yes. literally, um, I would say it is it is astronomically small, the number of people who are able to, like, go viral on their first or even their 100th video. Usually, yeah, yeah. most people will be grinding, grinding for years before they see any level of stability so like i mean i'm pretty open with the way like with my finances shit like i am not making a living yet like not even close and so as a result it's just like oh then i mean functionally i might be like making a small dent into one of my bills but functionally this is i do it for free you know what i mean yeah and and that is the that is the standard expectation on every single one of these platforms yeah yeah some yeah, people do definitely. it forever. Some people might entertain. Some people might even have an audience that's rather large that they keep going and like entertaining dozens and dozens of people for years on end and never be able to make a living off of it. And that is, it's kind of dire, you know, it's kind of dire. And so people got to be a little bit more, I feel like people should be a little more realistic. Yeah, definitely. Well, that's the thing that people don't see. Like, I remember when I f- first started doing it. You know, I, I, the thing is, is I'm in the position I am now, six months later. And I'm, I've not got, like, an enormous audience, you know. I'm, do- I'm doing okay. Yeah. But it's like, you know, I'm doing well in comparison to how other people do. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And I'm not doing, like, amazingly well. It's like most people are, like, you know, one or two viewer Andes for, like, a year maybe before they even start to build on it and start to grow. So, and the thing is, no one sees that. If you come to a creator later on, you don't see like the first few streams they did or like when they were putting out content and earning nothing and it was just a total grind. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, I mean, I like, yeah, like, but my first stream I had like, literally zero viewers until I asked my girlfriends to log on and please hang out and chat so that the number wasn't so intimidating. (laughs) You know what I mean? Where it was just like, I am literally just having a conversation with a wall at the moment um, and trying to keep it entertaining. And like, it's not like I just gave up and just sat and stared at the screen. I still kept going because, Hey, you never know. Somebody might come by and it, it, like now it sounds like oh shit like i'm kind of pathetic you know what i mean like i'm just like oh shit the things that we do to like make a living in this world but it's like but yeah it is it is very um there's a lot of precarity there's like multiple levels of precarity and yeah there is that whole thing of like people people do push through like no attention or anything and they might be making the most genius content you've ever seen sometimes i mean you've probably had it happen i mean arguably i could even say it happened to me with you where you were a smaller content when i first found your shit and i just happened upon it and was like holy shit this is really funny like why the fuck doesn't this person have a million followers you know what i mean but it's like that happens all the time it's literally a daily occurrence on twitch you'll go through streams and yeah there's probably a bunch of ones that are like ah this isn't quite there this isn't quite my thing but there's people who are like fucking albert einstein sitting there and they're just talking to their wall to no viewers and yeah yeah like remember that that's perfectly capable that's perfectly possible of of happening and for some of the people that you might like right now who you think are like oh they've they've 
they've entered into the bourge the bourgeois by um, by having like a hundred patrons or whatever, and it's like oh they, yeah they don't they, what they have a fucking platform and, and they need responsibility. Great power comes great responsibility. It's like okay, it's not really great power to like have slightly just like barely skated through and and be making a living now or even if you're and again there are some examples of people who do really good i think that like i think it's fair to say that like um contra points is probably doing pretty fucking good financially and i mean pretty fucking good by comparison she still fucking rents an apartment like yeah, people need yeah. to realize like fucking papa john's has like the the most like tackiest mansion and like statues of his own pizzas like in every single room that are made out of gold and he's just like hi son would you like me to fucking have uh some sodies airlifted in like that's the the disparity that we're still looking at and i do think that people seriously have a mental block on that level where they're like they're like chapo trap house is a is a bunch of fucking millionaires and shit and i'm like <laughs> um you guys don't know how math works, and I think you've forgotten who, like, actually has money and what that actually means. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the thing is, you know, we've gone off on a bit of a tangent, but that's totally yeah, called me. What, what people don't realize with Patreon, you know, is someone now who's, uh, you know, my Patreon's tiny. Like, it's, it's like my, my smallest revenue stream, yeah. naturally, because I'm mainly on Twitch and, you know. But, but in any case, it's like Patreon take a pretty big whack from your earnings, and then it gets sent over to fucking PayPal. PayPal, like, take a little slice of the stuff as well. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, there's these little cuts that are being made that people don't see. Yes. And then for me as well, I've got the exchange rate to worry about. So there's a whole bunch of stuff going on behind the scenes that people don't even fucking realize. They just look at the headline figures and go, oh, well, they're making fucking, you know, 50K per month on fucking Patreon. But they're not putting the pieces together and understanding it fully. Yeah. Oh, and... and, and yeah, that, that shit makes me go crazy. Like, you know, you know as well as I do. You know what the fucking cut is on a on a Twitch sub. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. And then then there's a second layer, which they double fucking dip because, pay, because PayPal gets a cut when you try to cash yeah. out. Yeah. It's yeah. crazy. Like, they cut so much. And, like, and this happens on Patreon takes a big cut. Um, they, they, have, they have a cut from the donation itself, and then they have a cut when you take your money out. Um, yeah. There's, like... They nickel and dime the shit out of your all of your favorite creators are getting nickel and dime to hell. And the ones who are able to like pivot to a um to like a platform like a d.gg or a v.gg, like um oh yeah, and I didn't even touch on that. Somebody in my chat mentioned self employment taxes, which I think is probably different in your in in the UK than it is here. Here in the US, you get you get absolutely railed with fucking self employment yeah, yeah. taxes. H horrible. It is the most like blatantly like oh. Wait a minute. Nobody gives a shit about entrepreneurs. They just want they want to to punish small businesses so that big businesses can keep having more and more time and space to grow. And they make it hard for you to fucking make any income off of your your businesses. Um but yeah, it's yeah. like the people people are totally oblivious to the like um to the the, the amount of exploitation that goes on of fa of like your favorite creators. And Again, even the ones who have like a v.gg or a d.gg, where they're able to um, get the like donations directly to the directly, I say quote unquote to them um, via their platform. Even though they still will have PayPal fees, they still will have um, refunds that go through all of these administrative things that are totally imposed that you have no say about. You can't do shit about PayPal fees. PayPal is a massive company; they're never going to budge. You can't even negotiate for them. Like so, yeah. It is a it is a, something that people don't think about. They're just like, oh, you fucking. They do fucking like napkin math based on like, oh well, if you one hundred percent yes, yeah. of all of your donations go in, oh my god, Chud Logic must be a fucking five thousand air. Holy shit, <laughs> I don't have five thousand. Yeah, yeah, exactly, and, and yeah, it's 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 kind of frustrating. Like I remember I was having like a, a debate in my Discord, and this person wasn't even like saying, oh, Contra should release their finances. They said every content creator should release their financial information and i was just like do you realize how ridiculous that is because the thing is for me is i'm not a fucking accountant right like i keep track of my earnings and stuff but in a very fucking haphazard way yeah um you know i've just got like a little spreadsheet that i use but to release financial information that can be interpreted you'd need to like pay an accountant to do that do you know what i mean yeah you need like an accountant to fucking actually, and also to not do it without doxing yourself by accident. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah exactly. Yeah, but and and that is one of the things that actually drives me, like that actually like 
pushes my mind slightly over the edge with people where I stop like having any charitability is the entitlement. Um, yes. Yeah, yeah. I saw and 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 that's right. I'm gonna do a fucking dramatic call out. Not that it matters because this person doesn't have a platform anymore. But um, Bad Empanada wrote like a massive th tweet thread on on Twitter that was about how um they like like oh well you know a content creator should be able to come out with a long video once every one to two months at max and if they're not you are being stolen from um via their patreon and i was like that is the dumbest shit i've ever heard in my entire life like if you if you genuinely think that like you're like you're contributing to somebody who's working on like very very difficult to make things most people who like fucking complain about various like the, like people who complain about like oh my this this artist is just like gathering patreon money and never never turning out it's, it's almost reminds me of the fucking anita sarkeesian thing where remember when people like freaked out about anita sarkeesian they're like oh she she ripped everybody off on her kickstarter and whatever and it was just like no like yeah, the yeah. project ended up being like 40 times bigger and she ended up like yeah they never did the dvd release that they promised because nobody uses dvd anymore by the time the, the project grew and they were like oh well she was supposed to originally make a full documentary well instead she made 12 hour and a half long videos about the topic at hand like people will be like oh like they will be entitled about that type of shit and be like oh this is like i have been lied to my money i'm like this person devoted the last five years of their life to making art from nothing they like yeah, creators yeah. pull shit out of the air and yeah there are some examples like fucking steven crowder but we're not talking about fucking steven crowders where steven crowder fucking like scoots into the into the office and to and tosses on a like a, a sweat crusted pair of pants every single day and just like blobs out whatever thing his scriptwriter wrote for him and then goes immediately back to bed um like nobody does that like we're not talking about that type of shit we're talking about people who make like like a lot of people who make fucking video essays that are like deeply researched that have fucking these people do more citations than the actual news a lot of these bread yeah, tubers, yeah, yeah. even the ones i don't necessarily like so like like or love their content or whatever like the idea that like you are entitled to like one one video but from your favorite creator per month if you're if they're if you if they want a crumb of food to eat is just un, it's it's unbelievable to me and i find that to be like how do you call yourself a leftist and have that type of viewpoint how do you believe that like labor is valuable and that we live in an exploitative system and then you're like hmm you're five minutes overdue for your uh, quota of um extremely enlightening heavy research videos for me to consume on my ass in my underpants probably while i'm jerking off and eating cheetos <laughs> yeah definitely and, and the thing is as well is, is like the thing to bear in mind too it is patreon is optional right like mm -hmm. no one's forcing anyone to use to use to become a patron it's called and patreon someone... you're supposed to be a patron of the arts yeah <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you like I would love to see I, I wonder I wonder if fucking Michelangelo is like painting the Sistine Chapel ceiling on his back with like his his fucking arm turning into a shriveled thing because he's been painting for so long and then his like his his like fucking whatever the Medici family or whatever of Venice comes in and is just like excuse me could you hurry up on the on the fucking on the on the details on the angel's wings and he's just like eh, yes honey <laughs> like you know what I mean? Like 500 feet suspended in the air on like a like a medieval uh, fucking contraption. It's like, oh, yeah, sorry. I'll make sure I fix those feathers. That's how it would have been if we had Twitter in the fucking Middle Ages, in the Renaissance. It would have been like, uh, excuse me, Da Vinci. Um, your fucking flying machine that's like been invented when simple machines are like the only understanding of like mechanics that we have. You invented a flying machine. Sorry, could you make a couple tweaks for me? I don't really like the color. Uh, could you make it yeah. come out a little bit faster for me? Like that kind of shit actually boils my blood. And I'm just like, I can't, I can't understand people who are like that. And there are a lot of them. There are a lot of people who are purported lefties who are just like, oh, I'm so mad. This last video is only 20 minutes long. Oh my God. I've had people like, um, you know, sort of message me and be like, oh, I see that you made a video about the uh, Invader V drama. And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, <laughs> well, why did you do that? And it's like, because I fucking wanted to. <laughs> it's like, if you don't like one video I released, watch the one from the day before or the day after. Because I release a video a fucking day on YouTube. Or watch one of my streams. I stream for four hours every day, like six days a week. Go and check one of those out. Maybe you'll find... Like, don't fucking message me because one particular thing I did didn't click with you. Do you know what I mean? Excuse it's me, like... uh, Chud, Chud. Um, as, as a, as I donated 100 bits to you once. 
Um, and I'm going to have to ask you to take down any content talking about um, Steven Crowder drinking dog cum because I, as a purveyor of fine dog cum, uh, really can't handle uh, your poor taste on that. Um, and, and if you don't do that, I'm going to refund my 100 bits. Well, this is, you know, you joke about it, but like some people do get. Do I joke about, about it? <laughs> Well, no, 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 no. In fact, I'll tell you what it is. It's not even the, because the people that contribute, I think there's, you know, I've got quite a good understanding. We've got understanding, you know, they they know what they're getting for their yeah, money. Yeah. But it's sometimes the people that don't even fucking put their hand in their pocket that are the most whingiest of all. They're literally just fucking, you know, <laughs> I don't want to call them freeloaders because I don't see, see people that are like that. Do you know what I mean? But they make themselves freeloaders by coming to you complaining about your content. Yeah. And it's like, I'm giving you all of this content. I'm not asking you and you don't put your hand in your pocket. And yet you come and complain to me because one video you, I did, you didn't like. I like, fuck off. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Those are people who fucking come in and say, oh, this topic is boring. I'm like, then fucking go to a different show. I literally, I had somebody come in and go, yeah. oh, why the fuck are you talking about? Why the fuck are you talking about Amazon strikes? That's boring. I'm like, fuck off then. There's literally, yeah, I know. Oh, 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 wait. Or is it that there's nobody else streaming at this hour and you're bored as fuck and your dick is so fucking flattened that you can't even whip it out anymore? You're here to fucking be entertained, aren't you? Well, guess what? We're serving Amazon. Get over it. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's um, you know, people come in and you're in the middle of a subject. It's like, oh, why are you wasting your time with this? <laughs> it's just yeah. It's like okay. I mean, I don't know. Why are you wasting your time typing that I'm wasting my time about this? Like, you know, like isn't that a little bit demented? Like, it feels a little bit upside down. <laughs> yeah, I think the th one thing to bear in mind though in all this is like we're, we're having a bit of a whinge about this, but like the vast majority of the people who watch vast stuff majority are, really are cool. so reasonable. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, totally. Like, I mean, most people are really fucking cool. But again, like, it's that whole thing, right? We all know that, like, negative shit sticks with us longer because it's hurtful. Yeah, yeah, it, it hurts. And you're like, I don't want that again. So it's like, you know, I don't know. I guess what my the, the summary is just people be fucking cool. Just be reasonable. And if you're reasonable, it, it, like, if you just fucking cool it just a tiny bit, chances are you're going to come out doing okay. Like, yeah, especially we, yeah. within the left. Now, if you want to go complain to uh, the mug club about, like, the, the leftover, like, dog cum residue in your in your mug club cup, like, then that's fine. I don't give a shit about that. But that's because they're fucking actually horrible. The rest of everybody, well, just fucking be reasonable, please. I, th I think the thing to bear in mind, and this is the really big thing for me that I always try to think about, is, like, I doubt very much that, like, Sargon is getting stick from like Count Bankula about the shit that he's making, if you know what I mean. And yeah. like, I, I doubt other creators are like, Sargon, what are you spending your subscribe star checks on? You know, like, they give a oh, fuck no, I mean, they're like, I mean, the best example of that, right, is like Milo Yiannopoulos, who just was like, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm spending my, he's like, he like, like shows the receipt of his fucking five star dinner when he was at his peak and he's just like you yeah. all paid for this huh and everyone's like base 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 a bunch of like like you know fucking emotes and shit yeah, and it's just like, like oh man i'm so glad what's that yeah yeah they're exactly like, like... fucking spending another check yeah here here let me pay for another fucking 900 900 dollars steak for you yeah, yeah, exactly. The thing is, I think, and this is something I think I've mentioned before. I, I don't know. I may have even mentioned it on on uh, on one of the Chud nights that we ha that we that I was on. But like, the thing is, is like the way that like quote unquote cancel shit works on the right is way different than it does on the left. On the left, we just exhaust each other because nobody wants to like. Very few people on the left, by the nature of the left not being about like fucking dominance and 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 just depravity um that the left is more about like emancipation and and like equality and shit like that people don't really have like for the most part people don't really always go for the kill they're not like necessarily going to destroy uh, a creator that, that of course this can sometimes happen nonetheless they're they're usually going to talk about it and exhaust each other and say oh we this this person shouldn't have a platform this person should shut the fuck up and all that shit so they just tire each other out it's like a, a like a big long slap fight that keeps going on on the right no one gets canceled ever until they're dead until they're done and when that happens yeah, yeah. like you saw this with fuentes vosh was the one who who did the stream about the catboy shit but it was Fuentes' own fans who destroyed his entire channel. They yeah. lost their shit. 
like, I mean, you can go, I mean, well, you can't anymore because they've all been deleted. But at the time, I went and did this just for curiosity's sake. I went and saw his comments from his fans, same, every single fucking video, the same fucking names are like, oh yeah, how does cat boy sex save us from the culture war, you fucking hypocrite? They will, that's how they do it. It's, it's one and done. If you fuck up, and you're no longer politically useful to the right, you're done. Other than that, they will, they will, you could just shit on, like, like, Milo Yiannopoulos could probably have thrown an actual turd into the face of one of his fans, and they probably still would have paid for him. They still yeah. would have paid for his dinner. But the moment he becomes, like, not acceptable to the, uh, to, like, the political movement, oh, done. Total trash. Now he's fucking begging for food. Because he's, like, saddled with debt. And he's like, oh, I'm so mad. Oh, I gotta be stuck on this stupid fucking... What's he on? Telegram now? He's like, oh, you... Oh, yeah. He's like, all of you people don't pay enough for me on on Telegram. And everyone's like, shut the fuck up. And then leaves his chat. And he's like, oh, I actually come back. But it's like... Yeah, no, he sold true. himself on... E he sold a dinner with himself on eBay. Do you remember that? Do you remember that happening? Yeah, I remember. And, yeah. And yeah, yeah. Nobody cause, bought cause... it. Nobody what, bought really? the dinner. Yeah. Nobody bought the dinner. Anyway. Jesus Christ. Yeah, so that's it's so just funny. like, like, that's what happens. Like, and I think that people forget that, that like, oh yeah, you know, like on the left, like everybody just like kind of like slaps at each other. It's really fucking cruel for some reason sometimes, um, which I hope we can fix that part for our own good, not necessarily, you know, for, for, for our own good, not like, not really for anything else. But it's like, but on the right, they don't do the like petty canceling. It's like when you're done, you're done. You're never coming back. You're never going to bounce back. You're just irrelevant now. And uh, yeah. That's how it seems to go for, like, the right-wing figures. But on the left, we don't really do that. Like, on the left, people just, like, kind of exhaust each other. And yeah, hopefully we can a, get better really at that. Yeah, that's a really good observation. And it's true, you know, Milo's probably the best example of that. But the thing is, as well, is, like, obviously the right have, like, systemic power. So what it was with, like, Milo Yiannopoulos is you had all of these, like, you know, university, um, you know, Antifa stuff, a lot of um, deplatforming. Yeah. But what did it in the end was that, it was when he got too close. He flew too close to the sun. Yep. And he was going to speak at CPAC. And that's when the Reagan battalion, which is like some fucking right wing thing, came out with this pedophile shit. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And it was like a targeted thing specifically. Yep. And, and it's like, I guess maybe we don't really have that so much on the left because we don't have the same kind of systemic power, if you see what I mean. Yeah, saying? there's not the same systemic power and there's also not the same the same level of willingness to engage in just, like, ab absolute, like, destruction. Like, I mean, but, al yeah. but also we don't have quite, I mean, a hot take, but we don't have quite as many fucking weird pedophiles. Like, um, so that that's another thing that, you know... I'm pretty sure that um, that it would be a pretty swift dismissal if a, if a major like bread tube figure was like you know credibly outed for something like that. I think it would be a pretty swift dismissal as well. But again, um, the the way that like the way that these groups work on the right is that uh, like they do it all in the shadows. They have their little clicks and whatever. And if they have a particular like hatred for somebody that, and, and if it's credible enough, okay, every single person is going to get in lockstep and that person will be just obliterated from the public eye. And again, like I mean, it, it's even fucking happening to like, I mean, you can even see this with the people that have been like, like, like angling for debates like crazy, like Molyneux even has just, nobody gives a shit anymore. He's not relevant anymore. So all the money just starts to disappear immediately. Um, and yeah, but I mean, they have a lot more money to begin with. They have a lot of organizations that can just prop some random fuckhead up. And the thing is, is that most of these types of problems, like if somebody is like a, a, a like a rampant fucking racist or, or whatever, that's going to be found out before they ever make it big on the left. That won't happen on the right, because on the right, you can have some like chuckle fuck who just happens to write for Breitbart that just the Koch brothers say, oh, you wrote a meme article? Well, we're going to make you the new, like, you're going to be the new right winger that everybody's going to love. Here's $10 million to just have your platform. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, cool. Well, um, we've been speaking for like quite a while now yeah. so i think a good ass fucking quite well. conversation. conversation yeah. yeah um so so yeah listen before before we wrap things up have you got anything that you want to shill to me to my to my chat well you guys could go watch my video on my youtube channel uh just search demon mom yes. on youtube you can watch the, the the original rant that sparked this conversation about it's uh a good, it's a really good rant what, what's that oh sorry you broke up there for a second did i lose you uh-oh 
Hold Sorry. on one second. Oops. I, I disconnected by accident. It was losing a connection. Ah, no, CIA got to me. But you guys can still right. see me. Hey, sorry about that. Uh, uh, it was uh, my connection on Discord was like exploding. Okay, that was cool. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, you guys can you can follow me on, on, on Twitch, Demon Mama Live on Twitch. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. Um, I'm not leaving Twitter despite my critiques. In fact, that's the opposite of what I intend to do. I intend to get fucking good at Twitter. You guys are going to be entertained. None of this fucking discourse bullshit. If you want discourse, come tune into my streams. But you can follow me at your Demon Mama there. Um, yeah, that's about it. Uh, take a second. That's my only advice to everyone who's listening who's not in my chat. Take a second before you tweet and just think, is this the right thing to do? <laughs> because... Twitter is really easy to spiral out of control. Just take a second. Have a little bit of self-control. That's, That's about it. Good advice. I like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for joining me. You should you um, should plug yourself real quick because you're also in my chat, so people can follow you. I yeah. Know oh yeah. Weird of course. Yeah. I always forget to do that. Um. Yeah. So I'm Chud Logic. Um. I'm a fucking memer and shit poster. Um. Who sometimes has some some hot takes and sometimes has some good takes. Um. I also am getting into, uh, you know, like Project Veritas, right? Yeah. I kind of did like a Project Veritas type thing in revealing this fucking leaked Discord call. Yeah. But I prefer to call myself Project Chuditas. Okay. <laughs> Chudment Day. <laughs> yeah, Chudment Day is upon us. Yeah, Chud um, Chudment so Day. Oh, hey, real quick, did you know that Voss shouted out that video that you did? Really? What yeah, this morning. Know? Yeah, he uh, he, he shouted out your. Uh, uh, somebody was like, "Oh, hey, have you seen Chud Logic?" He's like, "Yeah, I did see Chud Lo Chud Logic Logic's video. Aren't those fucking people? Uh, the the what's his name? The the what the D fuck? Distributist. Is distributist. Oh my god, it's so stupid. I always forget it. Yeah, the distributist was like, he was like, yeah, you guys, the distributist is so fucking pathetic. Yeah, so he was talking about your video on stream. Day. I just figured I'd I'd uh, let you know. Oh wow, yeah, thank you very much. Cool. It's good. Yeah. Some players notice me. Good. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah. Anyway, I'm um, sorry. I'm I'm rambling on a bit. Um, yeah. Basically, just check out my content. Just search Chud Logic on any social media platform. You'll find me. And yeah, that's it. Yeah. Well, hey, thanks for uh, thanks for this awesome collaboration. I had a fucking great time. And uh, me, me too. Yeah. How, how much longer are you streaming today? Out of curiosity. Um, about another um, hour. I've got some other things I'm going to cover. Sick. Well, hey, uh, everyone in, in Chud's chat, have a good time. And, and uh, yeah. And everybody in my chat, follow Chud because you guys are missing some of the fucking funniest content on the web right now. No joke. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. <laughs> Talk to you soon. Go to there. Bye-bye. Bye. <sighs> that was a fun conversation. Here, I can get rid of the speaking with thing.